أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم ملك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين وقضى ربك ألا تعبدوا إلا إياه وبالوالدين إحسانا إما يبلغن عندك الكبر أحدهما أو كلاهما فلا تقل لهما أف ولا تنهرهما وقل لهما قولا كريما واخفض لهما جناح الذل من الرحمة وقل رب ارحمهما كما ربياني صغيرا وقل رب ارحمهما كما ربياني صغيرا وقل رب ارحمهما كما ربياني صغيرا آمنت بالله لا إله إلا الله سيدنا محمد رسول الله الله أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا إلى يوم الدين إن شاء الله first of all brothers if you can get closer إن شاء الله the blessings of gathering and being next to next to each other this is one of the purposes of being in the masjid Allah just get as closer as possible if you need a chair you can grab a chair and get closer Whatever is comfortable for you, inshallah, you do it. But the main purpose is just, inshallah, to be, to feel the, the beauty of the gathering, inshallah. Allahumma amin. How's everybody tonight? Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Is everybody here for tonight's program? Yes? All right, alhamdulillah. Uh, as you know, the, 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 the theme of, of the Friday night's program is, is like an introduction to Al-Minhaj and Nabawi, right? The prophetic method. And uh, today, inshallah, we're going just to take one aspect. I was aiming to focus on like the whole perspective of what is the prophetic method. However, today we will uh, take that through the lenses of the prophetic method. We want to approach uh, and expand a little more on the topic of to today's Jumu'ah, right? Which is uh, our relationship with our parents. And I believe this is a, a very, very uh, important topic, uh, knowing that we are living in, uh, uh, a, as a minority in a society where maybe uh, the, the concept of uh, parents and our relationship with them is different than what we should uh, uh, look at it at or, or through or not, not uh, like the lenses that we should look through at uh, to this topic which is parents and our relationship with them and uh, I, I emphasize today in the khutbah that subhanallah there are different ways on how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala emphasizes the importance of things in the Quran so that may sometimes may be through introducing some linguistic uh, words that, that help us understand that this is really important. And one way, as I mentioned today, is for example, when you see the preposition inna, you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to say that this is really important, this is really serious, and you have to be careful and you have to pay attention to it. Inna in Allah ya'muru bil adli wal ihsan verily certainly absolutely definitely inna here comes to replace all those 
words that emphasize how big, how, how, how major is the, 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 the topic that will be addressed through in the next or the rest of the ayah. Verily Allah orders justice and wants for you to be spiritual, spiritually elevated. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could say, Allah God orders uh, justice and spiritual elevation. However, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Inna, to emphasize it. Uh, verily, certainly, this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders you and wants for you. And when it comes to uh, our relationship with our parents, when we, the, the other way to emphasize things is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would link a certain topic with another topic. Right? So for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, as we recited now from Surah Al-Isra, وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّا وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Allah, your Lord has decreed for you, man and woman, that you should treat your parents with high kindness, high level of respect. Uh, no, the, the first ayah, Your Lord has decreed that you should worship nobody except Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then He said after that, and you, that, you sh that you should uh, treat with a high level of kindness your parents. So here we can see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is linking his worship, worshiping him subhanahu wa ta'ala with kindness to the parents. And that tells us Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not say وَقَدَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّا وَأَقِيمُوا الصَّلَاةِ وَآتُوا الزَّكَاةِ and go for hajj and pray and this and that. Even though those are really so important things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala linked it with kindness to the parents. And just this is just to tell us that you have to be careful about that relationship. It's not a joke. It's not something that is left to our moods and our temper. And no, no, no. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you as much as He wants you to worship Him only and only Him, He wants you to be kind to your parents. If you mess up with that, you're messing up with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the same time. And we find that again in, in other situations. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in, again in Surah Luqman, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and li wali walidayn. You should be grateful to me and to your parents. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could say in this context, be grateful to me and uh, something else. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, and to your parents. And we found, I shared with you the hadith in which Rasulullah sallallahu said, رِضَ اللَّهِ فِي رِضَ الْوَالِدَيْنِ وَسَخَطُ اللَّهِ فِي سَخَطِ الْوَالِدَيْنِ uh, pleasing Allah means to please the parents and upsetting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and making Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala angry is, to, is when you make your parents angry. That, that means a lot. It's a heavy thing. It's not something easy. And this is a way to emphasize to us that that relationship, how, how we should care about it, how we should be very careful when we approach our parents. And as I said, because we are in a different culture and we... We, in, in, in a place where people see the, the, the world and, and, and relationships in this world through different lenses, we have to be careful as believers, as Muslims, how we should really take care of our parents. And subhanAllah, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the parents, it's always with the words ihsan. وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ ihsana. It's not just be kind, be good, be nice. Ihsan. You have to be, you have to be, to have a, an ihsani relationship with the parents. And ihsan, as we mentioned before, there are three definitions of the word ihsan in the Quran and in the Sunnah of the Prophet. The first one is what we find in Surah Al Isra. You have to be perfectly kind with them. It's like you seek perfection in your kindness with them. And then the other meaning, uh, uh, Truly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed ihsan on every single thing. So even when you slaughter, when you slaughter an animal, make sure that you do it perfectly. Gently, perfectly, without 
causing any pain to that, that animal that you slaughtered for you to eat afterwards. And then we find another definition of the word ihsan when in Hadith Jibreel, the long Hadith, I guess everybody knows or heard some, somehow this Hadith when, when, when Jibreel alayhi salam asked the Prophet tell me what is Islam so the Prophet answered him and then tell, he told me tell me what is Iman then the Prophet gave the definition of Iman and then after that the Prophet the, the, the man of Jibreel alayhi salam asked the Prophet what is Ihsan and then the Prophet Prophet said Al-Ihsan wa anta'bud Allah ka'annaka tara Ihsan is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as you see him high level of uh, you know observing and watching Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that feeling that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is observing you and watching you all the time if we put together these three meanings uh, it gives us the definition of what is a muhsin when we hear in, in the Quran in Allah yuhibbu al-muhsinin verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the muhsinin we, the first question who is the muhsin how can I be a muhsin so the first one is being kind to your parents is one way to, that leads you to ihsan being kind to even objects around you including animals it's a way to, that leads you to ihsan seeking to maximize your level of ibadah to the point that you feel that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching you all the time this is a path that it leads you to, to, to the ihsan you want to be among the muhsinin Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are giving you like a menu or a road map on how to get there right and subhanallah we shared the, the, the story of Uwais al-Qarni and inshallah I will share it and then we'll see if you have any questions but we mentioned something about Uwais al-Qarni we said that he was a man from from where? from Yemen from a place called is there anyone from Yemen? Who can tell as if this tribe is still in there with it took another name or Qarn. Uwais hmm? al-Qarni. He came from a place in Yemen or a little town or village that called Qarn. And the, the Prophet informed the Sahaba about this man. Even he never saw him, he never met him, he never heard about him. But he told the Sahaba, there will come a man to here, to this place from Yemen, from a place called Qarn. He's a righteous man. You see him, ask him to make the dua for you because his dua is accepted. And Uwais al-Qarni came in the time of who? Of Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu. And Sayyidina Umar, because he heard that from the Prophet he was always eager to meet Uwais al-Qarni one day. So whenever he hears that there's a caravan coming from Yemen, he would go and ask, is Uwais, is someone amongst you uh, whose name is Uwais here? If they say no, he would go back home. So one day, he heard that there is a caravan from the Yemen. So he went and he asked, is there anyone amongst you whose name is Uwais? And Uwais said, I am here. And uh, Sayyidina Umar approached him and said, are you from Karan? He said, yes. He said, did you have a mother that was sick all the time? He said, yes. Uh, and, and he started giving him some of the description that he could remind from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And when he confirmed all those descriptions, he said, Qal, oh, don't forget us from your dua. Don't forget us from your dua uh, because the Prophet ﷺ mentioned you and you said that you are a righteous man, so I'm here to seek your dua. And subhanAllah, the question is how, how Uwais al Qarni could reach that level of piety and righteousness that, to the point that Rasulullah mentioned him. And in fact, indeed, it was because of caring or he's caring about his mother about the, the, his assistance to his mother about the love that he had for his mother and she was old and she was sick and he couldn't you know this is another thing that I want to just mention quick, quickly you know our parents reach an age where sometimes it's hard for, for them to do things by themselves right and as a Muslim community we don't want the first option to be, because no, we know there are uh, elderly house around. We say, well, just take him to the elderly house. They will take care of him or her there. I cannot handle 
this situation anymore. Look at Sayyidina Uwais. He was always hoping to go and meet with the Prophet because he never was able to. It's not, he's not going to have uh, some vacation or break. No, he's going to visit the Prophet He embraced Islam before seeing the Prophet And he was longing to that moment in which he will meet with the Prophet It's like his objective is so high. However, whenever his mother becomes, you know, his, his, his health condition becomes worse, he stays and he takes his, his mother. He doesn't leave her to somebody to take care of her. He doesn't send her somewhere where someone can take care of her. He would stay, he would cancel his visit to the Prophet ﷺ and stay and remain with his mother. So my dear brothers and sisters, we have to be very careful. I'm not saying here that I'm against the idea of having elderly houses around. But do not make that, for, that, that, that option your first one. It's like whenever your parents are not able to take care of themselves, just take them to the elderly house and leave them there. Pay for them. We have to do our best until we are not able at all. Or there is no way we can take care by our, of them by ourselves. Then maybe we should start thinking about that. Maybe. And when we send them, and I hope inshallah that one day, in our community, we have alternatives, we have options that help accommodate the elderly in our community and all the Muslim community over the state. As I said, and I would emphasize that again and again, that should never be the first option. It will be the last after we exhaust all the chances and all the opportunities. And there is no way. I know a brother from North Carolina. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevate him tonight. Wallahi. He had a father who used, subhanAllah, he has some mental health issues and he used sometimes to just walk outside without telling them so they, they, he get lost and they don't know where is he and sometimes he put himself in situations where his life is at risk. And Wallahi, that brother was always patient and he would look for him again and bring him home again. And many people approached him and they said, maybe the best option is to take him to the elderly house. And he was rejecting that. He said, as long as I have ability, I will not send my father over there. I will continue taking care of him until the last minute. And until today, wallahi, I, I call from time to time and I ask him, how is he doing? Alhamdulillah, we're taking care of him. He's okay, he's fine. He's with them all the time. If he needs extra help, he would bring somebody home to help him. But he would never go and take him. You know, this is the worst thing that parents can experience at the end of their life. That they are somewhere. And somebody, while their kids are around, nobody is able to take care of them. And they are in the hands of somebody else. So again, my dear brothers and sisters, we should, we, should, we should really be aware of that and we should do our best not to be in situations like those. If, if we need to, then it has to be an extreme and a real urgent case that requires the involvement of more people to make sure that the, the, the life or the safety of that person is secured. Other than that, our parents, if needed, they are dependent on us. You know, when, 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 even when it comes to zakat and sadaqah, you know, you can, you can give your sadaqah or zakat to your brother if, or siblings if, if, if they need to, to your uh, cousins, to your, to your uh, uncles, to, but you are not allowed to give it to your parents. Zakat is not for the parents. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala considers Spending for them and taking care of them as part of our responsibility. It's a fard. It's a must. It's not something optional. It's a must. And again, I had, and I'll conclude with that, inshallah. I had cases in the community here and back in, when I was in North Carolina. 
where husbands come and they complain about how difficult is their situation because they are now between their wives and the parents and they don't know what to decide. And I had similarly situations of sisters who would come and say, you know, my, my husband doesn't like my family, doesn't like my parents, and or he loves his family more than, I, more than he loves mine or this or that. We should never be in that situation. Love is not, you know, of one color. Love is not just one type. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put different types of love in our hearts. Our heart is shared between those different types of love. The love that you give to your parents is not the same you give to your wife. It's not the same that you give to your children. Right? Each one of them get the love that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put in our a specific zone or part of our heart. So we, we don't have to uh, create attention or show uh, uh, you know, an, an unnecessary jealousy. Oh, he cares about his father more than he cares about me. This is not the case. We should appreciate, the husband should appreciate the, father, the, the, the parents of his wife and vice versa. They should help each other. They should feel that the presence of the parents with them is a blessing, not a source of, the, of, of tension. Right? And this is a real problem. I mean, I'm not talking about something that if this happens, it happens all the time and people come and share that concern. And we have to be careful, my dear brothers and sisters, through which lenses we want to look at our parents. If we want to look at through to that, through the lenses of Quran and the Sunnah of Rasulullah this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. وَصَاحِبْهُمَا فِي الدُّنْيَا مَعْرُوفًا And be kind companion for them in this life. وَإِنْ جَاهَدَاكَ The only, the only situation in which you can really not respond to your parents is when they invite you to something that is that will take you away of, from the deen. If they, they, they do their best for you to give up on your faith, don't obey. But other than that, Juraj, you know the story of Juraj, who was worshipping, he was a monk worshipping somewhere. So his mom missed him. She went to look for him. So she called him and he was in the prayer. So he, in the prayer he said, oh my God, should I respond to my mother or continue my prayer? And he decided to continue on, on his prayer. She came the second time and he did not respond. She came the third time and he didn't respond. And she made a dua against him. He said, Allahumma la tumitu hatta yara wujuhan mumisat. Oh Allah, don't let him die until he see the faces of al-mumisat. And mumisat are some bad ladies in, 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 in the area at that time. So the George, uh, 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 Juraj who was pious and he was a monk ended up falling in the traps of the shaitan. Because one day he did not respond to his mother. Some fuqaha say even if you are in the prayer and your mother calls you, you stop the prayer and you go respond to your mother and then come and continue your prayer. This is how important it is really to pay attention to them. And I wish, inshallah, I mean, for our children to have this perspective and to understand how sacred is this relationship with the parents. Otherwise, my dear brothers and sisters, if we leave our kids just to what is whatever is available to them in terms of ideas and culture, they will not understand, they will not realize that. And it's, it falls on our shoulders, it's our responsibility, it's not, not anybody's responsibility. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, who will help us inshallah improve no, no matter what we do, and I conclude, I promise I conclude with this. No matter what we do, we'll never be able to pay back for our parents. We'll never be able to. But at least we have to learn about our deen. And as I said, my objective, inshallah, this year 
He says, we will go and revisit the basics of our deen. And I believe this is one of them. This is one of them. Is to rethink our relationship with our parents. To check if we are doing the right thing. What can we do to do better? So because they are our key and our path leading to Jannah bi'idnillahi ta'ala. Inshallah, with that said, we will stop here. Inshallah, we will put the adhan. We pray Salat al-Isha and after Isha prayer. If you have any questions about that or anything that you would like to share, we would be happy to have that bi'idnillahi ta'ala. Subhanak Allahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfir kum tubu ilayk. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam asliman kathiran. Wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. The adhan will be called and we pray immediately after that. Jazakumullah.